Hello everyone, my name is Vimal Panchal. I am a master's student from Technological University Dublin. Today I will be discussing about my research project which is based on honeypot attacks using MHN sensors. So, this is the overview. Like, we will first go through the introduction, then characteristics and my implementation plan, the honeypot schematic, the detected exploitations, using the sensors I have focused more on like cowrie amounts not and puff and lastly the conclusion and references now introduction what is honeypot as we are aware about the ever increasing cyber attacks so one of the means through which we can understand the nature and motive of any cyber criminal is just to deploy a honeypot server so just deploying the honeypot is not enough actually we have to configure it like that so that the attacker believe that it's a legitimate target and continues his activity through which we can gather as much information as possible now this information can be very helpful to improve the security like by for example, the application or development team can roll out the patches which are necessary using this information or the antivirus providers can update their signatures on the daily basis using this information. So likewise. So in short, we can frame it like honeypot is an intentional pot created to trap the hypothetical intruder. Now, next is the characteristics and implementation. There are most common characteristics of honeypots are classified into three types like uh, all the sensors are intentionally configured to be vulnerable secondly deliberately made to be interacted with unauthorized parties and lastly the activity can be logged so we can trace and identify the motive of any attacker now implementation we have hosted all our servers on cloud using the digital ocean platform all the operating system were of ubuntu we have also integrated splunk along with mhn droplet so we can have the statistics of each and every droplet or sensor sorry this is the mhn schematic i have deployed single sensor on every droplet just to avoid the issues like um, high resource, high utilization. Like I have initially installed Dynia and it was getting, the storage was getting full in every two or three days. So later I decided to install one sensor on one droplet only. So these are the sensors which Honeypot, modern Honeypot net uh, Quark offers. So we can download directly by using the wget script which is present in modern honeypot network. So I have focused more on Amun, Kauri, Snot and Poff. Now let's start with Kauri. A Kauri is a medium to high interaction honeypot. The level of interaction is categorized as per the level they offer to the attacker. Lower the level, limited the data collected with lower risk. Higher the level, it is difficult to manage the amount of data because of equal risk. Now, Kauri uh, can be Kauri can reveal two types of information. First, first is connection information, and second is session information. The connection information consist of the credentials which are used to enter into any network or server or any machine and the session information is the activity which is performed after taking the access or uh, after taking the access of any system or machine so this session information can be replayed using Kauri's play log utility which is a very important feature and it's actually very interesting because it actually replays the log in command window. So we'll have a look in the later slides. So this is the analysis of Kauri. Basically, 95% of the total events were made from SSH session attempts. 
479 login attempts with random username and passwords here are the top 10 username and passwords the 11 commands were attempted with kauri honeypot six download attempts and one unknown command now here i can show you that i have used this playlog utility to play this file activity file so in the first we can see that the attacker tried to download a Perl script named bot pl and he successfully downloaded it and after looking this dot pl file in virus total it was related to mirai family malware and likewise i uh, noticed few other files which were related to same mirai family malware now another file was uh, someone tried to access the http www.google.ro but he i think he is a script kiddy so he was not aware about the wget command and the normal command so after he tried to access and download using wget he was trying to remove the same thinking that it was some action or some command has been execu executed so he is most possibly a script kiddy now next another two playlog utility screenshots of an uh, event recorded are one of them tried to print the number of available processing unit in the system by using nproc command and here a user tried to attempt a download from wget command but he resulted into uh, handshake failure because the website or url was permanently moved uh, another there were six malicious url download attempt from the same source ip with the same ssh version and the same url was downloaded this is the export we obtained from the splunk statistics so the ip was originated from amsterdam and the url was marked malicious and 13 antivirus have detected it so the next honeypot is amun amun was the first python based interaction honeypot low interaction honeypot which is followed the concepts of nepenthes but amun is more sophisticated and have easy maintenance so it captures the malware in an automated way by emulating well-known vulnerabilities it is more efficient in fooling attackers by using specific protocol based replies instead of random byte replies on the right we have the architecture of amun in between there is amun kernel which is the core component which maintains and configures the overall software it updates and it updates each and every module and the next module is request handler which handles every incoming and outgoing traffic and delegates it to the module based on ports now as soon as the uh, any incoming request based on ports is received by vulnerability module it will emulate vulnerabilities that lures spread malware exploit initiating an exploit as soon as the attacker find that he has found some vulnerability which is actually emulated so he'll try to exploit it by transferring the payload so now this shellcode analyzer is responsible for recognition of this shellcode after the vulnerability has been exploited so it will extract the payload from the shell code and it will place it in the download modules so later the submission module further process and of downloaded files for storing remotely now logging module is as we know it's used to generate different kinds of notification wherever the error exploit occurs now i only found one event which was traced from the start to the end so this is the event 
the one IP 191.41.249.234 try to scan the port on 445 so as soon as the vulnerability module receives a request from request handler it will emulate the vulnerability so this attacker tries to exploit this by transferring the payload in a form of shell code and the vulnerability which was exploited was eternal blue so we have recorded a log and I have highlighted the same IP and the hex dump was recorded. So major task was to find the same hex code in hex dumps. So fortunately we found one same match. The hex code was found in the hex dumps. So this hex dump was not in a readable format which was encrypted in which may have possibly led to the URL access of http.example.com which was also recorded in successful download as shown below. Now this the URL and the hash value was both were both marked as suspicious and malicious on the virus total and none of the AV engines could detect it but thus we can conclude that the attacker successfully exploited the emulated vulnerabilities eternal blue and transmitted the payload and the url was accessed and it was successfully downloaded in the download logs i would like to make a note here amun offers an important feature by replacing the local ip with the attacker's ip it doesn't allow the presence of amun the, the actually this feature was disabled by default i realized this it later if i could have uh yeah, uh, known it earlier so i would have tried to make some changes in the amun configuration file so we can collect a couple of more events similar to like this yeah that's it next is the snot snot is a simple lightweight sensor which is very flexible and powerful it actually can do real-time traffic analysis uh, combining the benefits of signature protocol and anomaly based inspection it is used as a IDS and IPS technology worldwide is usually consists of four main components as we can see here the main component is here the detection engine which will detect the packet as per the rule like if the packet matches the rule it will be processed according to the rule type and the decision and the alert is thrown out so by default it has over 1900 stock rules which are configurable so this is the analysis of snot i have pivoted it against the priority wise like the priority one means most severe and priority three means least severe so out of the total one lakh sixteen thousand events major events were of low severity so only six events were captured under the signature ET policy DNS update from external net. Now this alert is triggered each time the DNS request is processed between the machine and an external network. Now as we can see the source IP was 2.57.122.98. When I searched this IP on Whois lookup, I found that the entire range of this IP is marked as abuse and the domain name was abuse at the rate pptechnology.cc and the IP was originated from Netherlands so when I tried to search this range of IP in our Excel exported from Splunk we found that total 161 IP were found from Netherlands itself which was which may be responsible for other than above mentioned intruder activity now the next sensor is POF, the passive OS fingerprinting. This sensor identifies the OS of a remote host who is trying to uh, do some activity on our machines just by analyzing the TCP IP packets. So POF can also identify the link medium through which the connection was established. This is, this are, this is a sample of raw log. I have just separated two events so I can show you that 
OS is marked here as question mark because the POF was not able to discover the OS. So it obviously it will not further move to identify the communication link which was established. So in the next event it was able to find the operating system. So it will further move to identify the link which was used to establish the connection. So some undiscovered events can be improved using KPOF which is implemented in Linux and known as kernel POF as it provides high accuracy and throughput. This is the analysis of POF. So majorly the OS was detected was Linux and the medium used was Ethernet or modem. Now let's come to the conclusion. Kauri Honeypot gave us the impact of brute force and dictionary attacks which made us aware about the vulnerable passwords and usernames. And Amun focuses on providing an easy platform to the attacker for worm and bot collection by emulating the vulnerabilities. It's not seems to very simple but equally crucial as it detects the intruder's invasion method and related motive by its 1900 stock rules which are also configurable. The POF detected fair enough data but advanced version of POF can be used for more throughput and high accuracy. We expect that if we have set up Honeypot for several months with full-fledged features, we could have a wider understanding of attackers and attacks. So these are the references which I went through for my research. Uh, they were they consist of the papers which were based on Honeypot sensors like Amun, Puffs, Knot, and Kauri, and few YouTube links and other sources which help me to implement and troubleshoot few issues which I have faced during the implementation part and lastly the virus total and who is lookup which help me to find the reputation of any IP or URL. Now, that's it. Thank you so much.